I'm going to focus on the diagnosis or detection of left atrial thrombus. And whenever we're imaging any mass in the heart, we obviously think of these main five di differential di diagnoses. And particularly uh, when we're looking at the left atrial appendage, the normal variance, the unusual anatomical variance and artifacts come into play. And I'll show you a few examples of those. Um, the, the main predisposing factor to any thrombus formation within the atrium or appendage and the two uh, preeminent conditions that predispose to that are atrial fibrillation and, and mitral valve disease, particularly mitral stenosis. And the anatomical hallmark uh, or the imaging hallmark is a spontaneous echo contrast, which is representing um, aggregates of blood cells in a, in a low flow situation and is a, a, high, a strong risk factor for formation of thrombus and indeed uh, embolic complications. So when to look for left atrial thrombus, there are three main groups of patients. Uh, patients with atrial fibrillation planned for procedures such as electrical cardioversion, um, uh, ablation of atrial fibrillation with PVI or uh, left atrial appendage occlusion procedures. Um, flowing on from that is any time you're instrumenting the left atrium in patients that are at risk such as mitral valve disease uh, interventions. And uh, the large group of patients with cryptogenic stroke where a left um, or a, a cardiac cause of embolus is suspected. Um, of note there that in patients in sinus rhythm, the pickup rate is actually fairly low. Um, so the site of thrombus in the historical data with um, mitral stenosis has been the, the left atrium in half the cases, but um, in the more common situation clinically now with atrial fibrillation, uh, the vast majority of thrombi occur in the left atrial appendage. Um, the value of TTE, as you know, is quite limited due to uh, limited imaging windows. You can uh, occasionally see the left atrial appendage with a uh, two-chamber apical view when patients with left atrial dilatation and high left atrial pressures. Um, and if you do see a thrombus, um, you have reasonable high specificity, but the, the sensitivity for small thrombi is very low with this um, imaging modality. The gold standard, of course, is uh, transesophageal imaging. As Sean mentioned, it's the proximity of the esophagus to the left atrium being a posterior structure that allows us to use that short field, um, high frequency imaging, six, seven, eight megahertz, which gives us that high, speci high spatial resolution. And uh, the early studies from um, the early 1990s, two prospective large studies um, um, correlating with findings at mitral valve surgery for mitral stenosis showed very good sensitivity and specificity. And in addition to the anatomical imaging, we get some functional data by using our pulse wave velocity assessment of the ejection velocities um, at the mouth of the uh, left atrial appendage. And on the top panel here, this is a normal patient in sinus rhythm with good brisk uh, ejection velocity is up around 80 centimetres per second uh, in comparison with a patient with chronic atrial fibrillation, poor contractile function, velocity is down in around 20 centimetres per second and increasing the risk for, for thrombus formation. The value of uh, 3D TOE is really limited because we're compromising there on temporal resolution and particularly spatial resolution and what we need is, is high frequency imaging 2D uh, TOE. Uh, I mentioned uh, spontaneous echo contrast earlier. On the left panel is a, a mild example and a more severe example on the right where um, that aggregate of blood cells gives us that slow moving um, uh, echo reflections which can become more of a jelly-like structure and difficult to differentiate from thrombus in severe cases. Um, this is an example of artifacts and, and normal variants. Uh, if I can get these to play. This is um, left atrial appendage here. And yeah, and you can see a, a typical uh, artifact from the ridge or the cumulin ridge between the left upper pulmonary vein and left atrial appendage, which can be a bit tricky sometimes. And you can see here at uh, 60 degrees and 90 degrees, we're starting to see some mobile echogenicities. And we, when we swing it around to um, over 120 degrees, you can see, if this will play, that these are clearly part of the large pectinate ridges that, um, that uh, move in unison with the, uh, with the atrium. Uh, with the appendage and it's always um, reassuring to see brisk velocities in an appendage when we're trying to exclude thrombus. Um, on the other hand, in a patient with thrombus, you can see that, um, hopefully this will play a bit slow, um, the thrombus is more circumscribed, addition to, a, a different uh, density, echo density to the underlying pectinate ridges and independently mobile. 
Um, and of course the true test is uh, follow up uh, after anticoagulation at this similar 120 degree view you can see that that, that thrombus has uh, disappeared after a period of anticoagulation. Now a note of caution with uh, cardioversion, this is a patient with atrial fibrillation with actually reasonable contractile function, you can see the the event that's uh, ejecting pretty well, the velocity is up around 50 centimetres per second, um, not at super high risk. Um, but if we go to, uh, this was a patient where we cardioverted the patient, left the toe probe down, and this is seconds after restoration of sinus rhythm, and you can see there's quite prominent, very early um, high density spontaneous echo contrast. So this is a patient that had no thrombus but is at high risk for a cardioembolic event in the days and weeks following the cardioversion. So no thrombus at the pre-cardioversion TOE does not equal low risk um, coming up and this patient needs to be anticoagulated for a period. I mentioned earlier it can be difficult with very dense SEC uh, to differentiate from thrombus and um, you can get some help from contrast imaging in this situation. Um, this is using definity contrast to opacify the left atrium. You can see this slow flow that it, in the early stages it's not actually penetrating into the appendage. Wait a few seconds and you start to, to see it uh, penetrating into the appendage. And then after about 20 or 30 seconds it floods into the appendage and you can really uh, uh, confidently exclude any thrombus there and uh, help uh, uh, get rid of any artefacts. Of course there are some limitations of uh, toe and there are uh, competing image modalities now for detection of thrombus in the left atrial appendage. More and more important clinically because patients uh, coming up for PVI, uh, atrial ablation for AF, they're routinely having pulmonary vein mapping with CT or CMR and the desire is really for a one-stop shop where we can avoid this now extra procedure of doing a toe to exclude uh, thrombus in the appendage prior to the procedure and the data for CT is actually pretty extensive and looking pretty good. This is a, a meta-analysis from a few years ago of 19 studies comparing toe and CT performed within seven days and uh, the, um, the incidence of, of thrombus in the LA appendage there was about 9% and the specificity and sensitivity pretty good, 96 and, and 92%. But given that you've got a fairly low prevalence of um, thrombus, the positive predictive value is still a bit of a problem here. Um, these are just some examples of CT where we've got good penetration of contrast into the appendage and you do get quite exquisite anatomical detail and particularly when you get um, elongated um, appendages and extra, um, extra lobes you can see that the, these are parts of the appendage that we just wouldn't even see with TOE so I can imagine that um, with, in the future that we may see increased sensitivity um, and becoming the gold standard. The limitation of course is in slow flow situations where you haven't got in your first pass contrast uh, uh, snapshot you haven't got penetration of contrast into the appendage and you see this defect here and you're not sure is that true thrombus or is that just slow flow and there is a way to overcome this with CT and going back to that um, that, um, that uh, study I was talking about the meta-analysis there were seven of those 19 studies where they uh, examined imaging with uh, delayed imaging and that markedly improved that specificity from 94 up to 90, 99%. So if you, if you follow these sort of imaging pro protocols you can uh, have a high accuracy for detecting left atrial thrombus and left appendage thrombus. CMR on the other hand um, is at an earlier stage of evaluation. This study just came online in, in JAK Imaging this month and is the largest study published to date, 260 patients. And they evaluated three different protocols, two of which didn't, didn't fare too well. But using this one here, this delayed enhancement CMR with a long inversion time, they got surprisingly very good correlation with, with TOE. Um, and you can see uh, the thrombus here is a filling defect in the left atrial appendage. Uh, but this is just one, one centre retrospective design and a, a fairly low incidence of thrombus to 3.5%, uh, so needs more evaluation. So to summarise, TOE remains the gold standard, um, but it does require a fairly careful examination and some expertise and experience from the operator and judicious use of contrast uh, um, as well. So, um, CT contrast with delayed imaging looks very, very promising. Um, and I think you can effectively rule out thrombus if you have got effective uh, penetration into the appendage and CMR is, uh, needs further evaluation.
Thanks for your attention.